My voice was filled with pleasure as I could finally relax, I know there was a reason I liked this place. It has been almost two hours since my battle with the stupid mutt. On the way back Ram and I met up with the villagers that were still looking for us. They did try to come back and help us in the end. Well, two slow boys, we already had everything handled. And it was a good thing we did too. If they had managed to find Ram before me they would be dead by now. The Woolgarm would have slaughtered them like sheep. I still remember their dumbfounded pale faces when they saw what kind of beast I was dragging along behind me. Ken looked like he was about to piss himself. They had no idea what lurked in these woods and he was kind of a wimp in the first place. Okay, maybe that's too much. I can't say I would have reacted differently if I was in his place. Heck, I probably wouldn't even have batted an eyelid when I heard of people looking for some missing kids, much less wandered into the mabeast infested forest to look for them. I guess he is not a complete wimp then, he's actually pretty brave if measured by the standards of our modern age. I only dared fight those beasts head on because I knew I could handle them. Servants are walking armies, capable of devastating even modern battalions. There was no way I had to fear these pumped up mutts, magical steroids or not. Right now, I'm currently in a bath. Or is it a pool? I mean, considering the size of this place, hell. This tub alone can handle more than 10 people. Yeah, definitely a pool. As much as I hate to admit it, Roswell is a frighteningly competent magus. Or is it magician? Nah. Everything in this house, from the kitchen to the library, is fueled by mana. I have no idea how he did it, but the clown managed to somehow conduct the latent magical energy of the atmosphere to power his manor. This was an unbelievable complex achievement, I yearn to learn how he managed something like that. After all, knowledge is power. Still. I do not like that clown. He's likely to return by tomorrow morning. After Ram's report he will probably offer me another boon. The big question is, what should I ask of him? Asking him to help me return home is a no-no. He has no intention of letting me slip his clutches, so this would only make him more wary. No matter what, in his eyes I was the key to releasing his mistress, Echidna. He was going to take every measure to see her again, be it lie, scam and even threatening me. If he was an ordinary magus I could just play his pride, like Karitsugu demonstrated wonderfully on Kanath el Meloy during the Fourth Holy Grail War. I did have quite the mouth on me and my knowledge would be of great help in manipulating the clown. But alas, Roswell is anything but normal. He has lived for over 400 years boy continuously possessing the bodies of his descendants. He has achieved what many magus dream of, other than opening a path to the root of course. Immortality. Not complete immortality, his body still aged and died eventually after all. Without this his mind would have long ago be irrefutably corrupted. Yeah, no. He did have more than a few loose screws inside that head of his. However, his mind had not yet deteriorated enough to be comparable to the likes of Zokan Matu. Perhaps he had also just been mad since the beginning, Echidna did mention he tended to be too earnest or something like that. Coming from a woman that can be considered the definition of a sociopathic meant quite something. My only comfort is that Roswell at least has some degree of morality. Small as it is, he can still feel regret. At least I'm not dealing with some crazy old magus that happily lets a little girl be violated by insects. Compared to Zokan, Roswell was still reasonably sane. Had his mind degenerated too far, with this world still practically in the age of gods. I visibly shudder at this mental image. That would be horrible, mixing Naza versus nature of human cruelty with re, zero's amount of residual power. Might as well add Madoka Magica levels of tragedy while we're at it. Throw in some Evangelion and Tokyo Ghoul as well. Hell. Go mix in some corpse party horror and mix in Akane GA kills corrupt nobility. Why not go all the way? I let out a sigh as I rubbed my temples. What in Akasha's name am I raving about? The hot water must be going to my head. I rose from the tub, pool, shaking my body to get the water off me. I walked to the corner of the bathroom, bathing hall. It's big enough to house a swimming pool after all. I dried myself with the towel I brought along before tying it to my waist. I was about to leave like that, I could hardly bring my clothes in with me, they would get soaked from all the steam. As I opened the door I come face to face with Amelia who had her fist raised as if about to knock the on door. Our eyes met for a brief moment, both equally surprised. Amelia's gaze slowly started to travel further down my body. I watched with fascination as Amelia's normally pale face turned a healthy shade of red, mouth hanging open and pupils dilating. 
I could feel my own cheeks heat up as well and had to hold back from squirming under her stare. Baba. Bua. Bub ha ha. I took a wordless step back and shut the door in her face, then turned around, hand clapped over my ears in preparation for a high-pitched scream. I prayed to any deity who might listen that she would not start screaming. Ram would never let this go, I could already hear her accusations. Shamelessly parading your body in front of poor innocent Amelia-sama. Are you trying to seduce a royal candidate? This Ram is very disappointed, that is low for even you, you two-faced knight. Yeah, something along those lines for sure. To my eternal relief, the expected cry never came. I slowly lowered my hands and opened my eyes. Emmy. I called out. Why why yes? Her loud and high-pitched voice came through the door. I let out sigh of relief, thank the root she did not scream. This could have ended so badly, why in Akasha's name did you come here? I asked aloud, my voice barely staying calm. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. I I I just want to call you. She finally stammered out, I can't see her face but I'm sure right now she looks like a certain Hyuga in front of a certain Jinchuriki, why you were taking quite long in the bath and... I, see. I replied voice slightly shaky, was I really in here this long? Eh sorry, I just almost fell asleep in there. A lie, not that Amelia can tell. Are you fine? She asked after moment of silence, she now sounded calmer, I mean, even if the lesser spirits can heal you but they did not replace the blood you lost. If you're still exhausted. I'm fine. I answered, somehow I can't help but smile a bit. It feels nice to have someone worry like this, I just have a lot on my mind. Is that so? It was clear she was still worried, but also didn't want to be rude, you're really doing dangerous things again Aaron. In my defense I did not have much of a choice. I defended myself, would it make you feel better if I allowed that beast free reign of the village? Of course not. She responded with heat in her voice. It's just. She seemed at a loss for words for a moment, I can only imagine her sulky face, it's just. I wish you would tell me first before running off like that. I blinked, utterly surprised at that, Emmy, what good would it do if I told you? I asked rhetorically. You're not stupid, we both know that despite you lacking Kamo Dash. Don't impose your view of, common, on me. Amelia cut me off with a deadpan voice. Sense and have been shut away from the world for a long time. I finished as if she never interrupted me. I know that. Amelia replied, frustrated. But, at least tell me. I. She trailed off and fell silent. I closed my eyes and sighed. I know, and you're right. I should have informed you first. I knew what she had in mind, she just had a hard time expressing herself. I'm sorry for that. I apologized sincerely. She did not respond to my words for a moment, then I heard a small giggle, apology accepted, she declared happily. I could tell she was smiling, the same satisfied look on her face she had when she helped the little girl who got lost in episode 1. Ha! Huh. I only chuckled at her childish expression. To be this pleased by a simple apology. Subaru was right, Amelia was easy to please at times. I brushed that thought aside, right now there were more important matters at hand. Now, will you please away from the bathroom? Would like to have dinner and still need to fetch my clothes. I'm hungry woman. I feel like I could eat half cow by myself now. Yeah. Why yes. This is. Aaron Green eyes seem sparkled as he stare at the piece off meat on his fork, face frozen in an odd expression. This is magnificent. Rem. You have really outdone yourself this time. Rem seeing the blonde man shooting her such a heartfelt smile could not help but smile back. She found his face to look really cute. It's nothing special Aaron Sama, Rem only cooked it like how she usually prepares steak. Nonsense. Aaron brushed away her modest reply. Rem, this woolgarm was about one of the most unpleasant looking creatures I have ever seen. To turn something like that into this kind delicacy speaks volumes of you skill. He said while gesturing to the giant piece of meat in front of him. While the taste was far from perfect, Aaron had to admit this was still one of the most delicious steaks he ever tasted. Monsters of the lands beware. You just became a saber class's new favorite food. Rem stare at Aaron for a moment, briefly sparing a glance at the cooked demon beast resting in middle of table. She was flabbergasted when she saw the blonde knight drag the maybeast's carcass behind him, but it had nothing on her surprise when he asked her to cook it for him. 
Rem was sure Emilia-sama and Beatrice-sama also looked at him like he would start sprouting extra limbs at any moment. I is it really that good? Emilia asked from her seat, uncertainly watch Aaron devouring the beast. It is, you should try it. Aaron answered while gesturing to the meat, do you want me to slice it for you? He offered as he raised his knife. No, thank you. Amelia's response was instant and to the point. Your loss. Aaron replied with a shrug as he sliced off another portion of meat and stabbed it with his fork, it tastes good, right Rem? He asked the maid. Rem wouldn't know. She only cooked it. Aaron's fork froze halfway to his mouth. He slowly lowered it and stared at the blue-haired Oni. Are you telling me you gave me untested food? He asked, his voice flat and blank. The way he looked at her made Rem feel shudder. It was not intimidating, but it still made her uncomfortable. She caught a pitying look from Emilia-sama. Nesama has tested it. That made the pseudo-saber blink, Rem did? Yes. When Rem was cooking the meat, Nesama was the one who volunteered to taste it. Rem answered, Nesama said, since Ram also had a hand in hunting this beast she is curious how it tastes. If this meat ends up poisoning Ram, please tell Aaron Sama to fetch an antidote. She quoted the pink oni. I. I see. Aaron doesn't know how to respond to that. He did not expect that at all. Ram is right though Aaron. Amelia chimed in, eating demon beasts is unheard of. Who knows what poisons they carry. She actually come here tonight to make sure he was fine after eating the meat. She was going to check his health afterwards. I appreciate the concern but I think it will be fine. Aaron replied in a nonchalant tone. Demon beasts were created to become food in first place so he doubted it would poison him. Speaking about Ram, is she okay? He asked as he turned to Rem. Nesama is fine, right now she is resting in her room. Rem replied, although she seems more exhausted than she looks, strange since she was not injured that much. That was true. While Rem certainly got roughed up by the woolgarm, her injuries consisted of nothing more than a few scratches and bruises. Aaron had made sure she was fine. He himself actually lost more blood than her. The problem lay within her small mana reserves. Ram greatly exhausted herself struggling to injure the thing with her spells. The Mabiasts of this world seemed to have a small amount of magic resistance themselves. To survive some of the spells she chucked at it, one of them in point blank, spoke volumes of their resilience. In comparison to the Nasiverse, these animals seem to be at the level of weak chimeras. No, even less than that. They are only two or three levels above common beasts, they were created for nourishment after all. The three great demon beasts in the other hand are most likely monstrous beasts. While their strength is relatively low, they make up for it with their endurance and magic resistance. Eren thought, remembering Hakugiai easily shrugging of magical energy attacks. It took a physical manifestation like Rem's ice spear to truly injure it. Eren Sama. Hmm. Eren was brought out of his thoughts by Rem's call. Did something happen to Nesama in the forest? Eren's mind screeched to a halt, remembering the pink oni squirming in his hold, letting out weak moans. He quickly turned away to hide his burning face. Yeah, you could say that. He said, trying his best to seem calm. Let's just say you should ask Ram herself about it. Rem's eyes narrowed in suspicion. She was about to voice it but found herself hesitating. Aaron noticed and tried to reassure her. This is Ram we are talking about. Aaron said with small chuckle, do you think she would stay silent if I did something improper to her? Ah. No. Rem did not mean to accuse Aaron Sama. Rem replied hastily, a bit surprised that the man can read her that quick. Is that so? Aaron sounded amused by the response. He turned to Amelia, Emmy, can you leave me and Rem alone for a moment? Eh. Amelia blinked at the sudden odd request. She gave Rem a look before shifting her gaze back to him. Despite the smile in Aaron's face he seemed serious. If you say so. She looked confused and curious but decided that perhaps there was something going on between them. Amelia may be too busy to really interact much with the twin maids but she was not blind. There was always a certain tension between Aaron and R.E.M. While the knight got along pretty well with Ram, Rem was another story. Maybe they are going to solve their differences. Amelia thought as she left the dining room. After her exit there was only silence between them. Aaron swallowed his food and wiped his mouth. All right. What did you want to talk about? Was Rem that obvious? No, but what else could you thinking right now? 
Aaron asked rhetorically with chuckle, you're like your sister, you must have found my presence to be, irritating. Especially the witch stench lingering around me. Rem eyes widened slightly, Aaron Sama knew. Of course, it was not obvious but the clues you left were enough. Aaron chuckled, Ram didn't tell you I see. He murmured absent-mindedly. He briefly wondered why but then dismissed it. Ram probably wanted him to talk with Rem on his own. Unfortunately, I can't tell you why I smell like the witch. Literally can't. Can't? Rem asked while tilting her head, what does Aaron Sama mean exactly? Aaron pursed his lips, his mind trying to formulate the proper words to explain his condition. I can't tell you my reason, I can't say it. However, it is safe to that I am bound by certain conditions. Similar to occur dash. B.A. dump. His fork slipped his fingers as his eyes widened in pain. His hand flew to his chest as he felt something literally brush over his heart. An icy cold settled over the organ, like a dagger poised to strike. The simple touch was enough to make him seize up. Aaron Sama. Rem immediately went to his side, noticing him clutch his chest, the witch's stench. It was small, barely noticeable, but there was no doubt. Like a flash of light, the smell magnified briefly before fading away. What was that? A warning? The condition should only trigger when I tell someone about return by death, just mentioning the curse should not have such consequences. In the show, Subaru got killed when he started to talk about return by death, other than that, the curse did not seem to care about anything. So why? Why did it prevent him from even talking about being cursed? Could it be the curse adapted to him? Or did Subaru just never try it in the show? Clever bitch. Aaron grit his teeth in anger as he regained his breath, REM. He called with serious a voice. The blue-haired Oni was tense but nonetheless answered his call. Yes? Trust me, I would tell you if I could. You saw what just happened a moment ago. Aaron said, choosing his words carefully, I can't speak of anything relating to this, but trust me, if I wanted to harm you or Ram, I already had many chances to do so. Rem bit her lips, her eyes filled with uncertainty. She could not find it in her to accuse the knight of lying, he was right. She trusted him when he went out alone with his sister, and the trust was not betrayed or misled. Why? Rem found herself asking that, why Aaron Sama Dash? Before I answer that, let me ask you first. Aaron cut her as he finally regained his composure, the question, did you ask both of them? Rem mind went blank for a moment, her thoughts drifting back to the previous morning. Ah, uh, that is a very interesting question. Roswell said with an intrigued smile. Will, for me, I personally choose the first of course. E. Why? Because e, there is nothing few to see someone always accomplish their objective. It will feel good for a moment but in long run. It is so boring. It is the first of course. Ram answered, while it indeed is good to have everything go your way, if you keep succeeding then you will find things soon become meaningless. Rem doesn't understand. Ram muttered aloud, her face clearly disturbed. How? Why? Why would Roswell Sama and Ne Sama, they are so perfect, so why their views? Because in a sense, perfection is ugly. Aaron solemnly said. When you reach perfection you will realize that you will stop to grow. You become stagnant. You stop moving forward. The driving force that made you so effective, the force that made you beautiful, will be gone. He stared at the shocked Rem, her eyes wide and filled with disbelief. Tell me Rem, aren't you sick of the way you live? Rem's eyes narrowed to slits, her confusion gone. The knight realized he had just touched on a very sensitive spot. I do not mean working in here, I mean your state of mind. He said, poking his forehead with his thumb to emphasize the point. You work every day, thinking you should be perfect, that you should be the best. Mind you, not that this attitude is wrong, but you are misguided. The person you are doing all of this for does not care about it. He tilted his head to stare at her. Her head was bowed, hair shadowing her eyes. That was a very ugly sight to see. Rem was silent, her body did not move, not even a twitch. Her face remained unseen due to her hair. The blonde watched on as her shoulder began to shake, her fists clenched, knuckle turning white. You don't understand. There was no politeness in her voice, no respect, but clear hostility. Just like Ram spoke to him earlier, when he pushed her the same way. No I don't. I don't even know what happened. Aaron admitted in a blank tone of voice. Blue eyes snapped up to glare at him. Her pristine face marred with fury. 
Despite her beauty, Erin could clearly see the girl as the creature she was capable of becoming. This was not the sweet maid known as Rem, this was the demon that would mercilessly continue to crush to crying, begging Subaru just because of her hatred to which cult. He was one of the many that favored Rem over Amelia. Seeing the relentless loyalty and love she showed for Subaru deeply moved him. Episode 15 touched his heart, seeing Rem dragging her own broken body towards his chained form, freeing him at the cost of her own life. But this, this, this reminded him of her other side. It made him realize that truth really was stranger than fiction. To experience meeting her like this. Aaron could understand why Subaru still loved Amelia, despite the devotion the girl in front of him continued to show. Despite her giving her everything to him. Because deep down inside Subaru's heart, so deep he may not even realize it, he was still terrified of R.E.M. Part of him will always remember that this sweet, loyal girl brutally murdered and tortured him on several occasions. And Amelia. Amelia had never done anything to him. Even when Subaru knew she was angry with him when he was being an ignorant idiot in the capital, she never raised a finger against him. This was Aaron's conclusion as to why Subaru still chose Amelia as his main priority, despite also showing sign of slowly falling for Rem. And it made him understand why Subaru cannot be blamed fully for his decision, death always leaves its scars after all. You don't understand, yet you dare talking about my life? Rem growled, her blue eyes filled with a menacing glint, you dash. But I do understand what is happening right now. Aaron was calm and collected as he cut her off. You Rem, need to stop this farce. You are hurting Rem. And just like that, all of Rem's fury vanished, like it was never there in the first place. Her malevolent expression was replaced by pure shock, her mind became blank. She stared at the knight who returned a solemn look. W what do you mean? Rem asked, her voice dry. Has it ever crossed your mind that whatever you do, Ram never asked you to work like this? Of course it did. But it doesn't matter. It was Ram's fault dash. How do you think Ram felt when she saw you working yourself so hard? Ram found herself freeze once again, but Aaron was relentless. You are the younger sibling, so perhaps you did not realize. Aaron closed his eyes and relaxed into his seat, but Ram is hurting when she sees you push yourself too hard. What do you know? Rem asked with a glare, how can you dash? Because I also have a little sister. Aaron snapped at her, for once there was genuine irritation in his green eyes. Rem breath got caught in her throat. How could she forget about that? She remembered how any nearly broke only a few days ago when he was reminded of her. Naysama never looked hurt. She spoke with a raspy voice. Of course she did not. What kind of older sibling would show their pain in front of their younger sister? Aaron said with a snort. Do you know why we are born first? He asked softly. It's because we have to protect the little ones that come after us. Thank you Ichigo Kurosaki, your words has made him have a better opinion of you. Now if only that orange-haired guy banged Rukia instead of Oriheim. Not like he mind the pairing but in his opinion Ichiheim seemed too forced, there was no development shown in their relationship damn it. How do you think Ram felt when she saw you push yourself? Hurt yourself? Exhaust yourself? Even worse, she could not do anything to help you, at all. There was no need for lies and he did not try to make Rem feel bad. It was all truth. Ram did not care about Rem trying to become perfect for her sake, she only cared for Rem's happiness. Ever since they were children, that was all Ram cared about. He had seen it, never once had Ram even been angry at R.E.M. He saw her howling in desperation when Rem succumbed to the curse. Saw her forsake everything, ignoring even Roswell's orders, for the sake of avenging her Rem. And still, Rem did not realize it. She was blind to Rem's love, too focused in improving herself, shouldering the world on her own, hurting Rem in the process. Because never even once had Rem blamed Rem for what happened that night. Rem felt like a block of ice had been shoved down her stomach at hearing this. Was it true? Was Naysama really hurting like this from watching her work? Was she too blind? too selfish to even see what was in front of her. She started to remember the looks of concern, her elder sister telling her not to push herself. She remembered brushing it all away with a smile, telling her she was fine. It's, it is true, isn't it? She thought somberly as her face turned to the floor, eyes showing nothing but pained reflection. It was obvious, how could she not see it in the first place? This man in front of her was absolutely right. She did this. She did all of this. She did everything for her big sister's sake. And also for her own. 
She did that because she knew that was how Naysama should be. Everything is perfect and absolute. That was how Naysama was supposed to be. But she isn't, she's not perfect. She can't be like Naysama no matter how hard she tries. Rem felt disgusted at herself. At the pain she caused to her Naysama. Everything I have done, everything I did. Rem voice was filled with anguish and pain, she did not realize that she had fallen to her knees, her eyes shimmering with unshed tears. The realization hit her like a hammer. Had everything she had done to this day accomplished nothing but causing more pain for her big sister? Not really. A gentle voice brought Rem out of her stupor. The man who showed her the cruel reality of her action was no longer sitting in his chair, instead kneeling by her side. His once uncaring, cold emerald eyes were now filled with warmth. It hurts Ram seeing you push yourself too hard, picking up her slack. His hand rose and caressed her cheek, wiping the tears from her eyes. But, do you know why she permitted you to do so? Why she did not tell you to stop? His lips curled upwards, showing a small smile. Because she found you beautiful. Be, beautiful. Ram croaked the word with pure confusion, Rem is beautiful. When someone reaches perfection they become stagnant and immovable. They become disappointed, because that's it. They will no longer move forward, the spark within them will slowly extinguish. True, people may enjoy it. They will cherish it, bask in its remaining glow even. However, eventually they will forget it. That was human nature. We are negative creatures. The majority of people will always remember bad times over good ones. When facing despair they tend to succumb to hopelessness. They forget that they have survived worse things in the past. Everyone has to face their own demons eventually. Their minds are clouded with worry and fear, ending them before they ever reach the perfection they strived for. But you Rem are beautiful. Why? Because of the way you work so hard, because of the ideals that drive you on, the desire to overcome the flaws inside you, is truly beautiful. It shows your true beauty in ways that can never be replicated. The people who are shrouded in dark emotions will remember that not everything is always bad. When they find their inspiration, the fire that enlightens their spirits will burn once more. And those fires, that drive them to achieve perfection, is what makes them truly beautiful. And wouldn't it be more beautiful if you did this not only for Ram's sake but for your own as well? Aaron asked. You deserve better than this. Rem does not. Rem instantly denied, tears streaming down from her eyes. Rem felt so happy when Naysama lost her horn. Rem is nothing but a failed copy of her. A failed substitute. Compared to her Rem is Dash. The one who cares for the people in this house. The one who fills my greedy stomach, Aaron cut her off with a smile. The girl's eyes widened. The one who does the most work out of anyone living here, even teaching my lost self about this continent. Rem bit her lips, eyes glancing down. It doesn't mean anything. It is Rem's duty to take care of the house, and Aaron Sama is smart enough to learn anything with ease. Aaron stared at the blue-haired Oni, his face calm and collected, showing no sign of frustration despite Rem's stubborn self-loathing. Does that change anything? You still do all of this. He said, causing the girl to look up at him once again. So what if it was insignificant? You took care of this place for years, to the point that Rose even promoted you to head maid for your hard work. So what if I'm smart enough to understand the things you said? Does it change the fact that you sacrificed your own free time to teach me? He tilted his head slightly. It might be weird coming from me. I am quite cynical and a pessimist too. But isn't it time for you to start looking at tomorrow instead of the past? Why look at things that already happened? Why keep dwelling in them? Sure it is good to do that if you want to learn something, but there's no use to bask in them. It will do nothing but keep hurting you. There is no need to keep pushing yourself. Ram never asked for it, and you know how it hurts her to see you like this. No one blames you. The world will always be cruel, we all have to find the strength to move on. Push it back. Stand on your feet, look to the front, and shove it back. Do not hesitate, do not waste your youth, move forward. Embrace every day with a smile, because right now your life is beautiful REM stop blinding yourself with the past. So laugh REM, laugh. Aaron smiled as he rose to his feet, extending his hand to her. Laugh, because all suffering, the pain, everything you went through has birthed a beautiful bed of flowers that surround you. Right now, enjoy it with those who are waiting for you. Rem stared at the extended hand of the man that's smiling to her. 
Tears were washing over her pristine face, her lips quivering in uncertainty. Her hands slowly rose, shaking, unsure, but surely moving to reach the hand in front of her. The hand of a man she distrusted, even feared only a few hours ago. She found herself hesitating at the final few inches separating them. Is it okay, for Rem? She found that question slipped from her lips without realizing it. To move forward after everything Rem brought upon Nesama. After all the pain she brought to her. Her answer came in the form of a hand grasping her own, washing away her trembling with a gentle grip. Rem felt herself being pulled into an embrace by the young knight. Everyone deserve happiness in their life. Aaron spoke in gentle tone, patting the back of her head softly. And Rem, for someone who has worked so hard, I don't think there is a person more deserving to be happy than you. That did it. Her whole body trembling, Rem shed her hesitation. Her hands snaked around the servant's waist, pulling herself closer to him, chalked cries rattling her form. For the first time ever since that fiery night, Rem found herself crying in happiness. Ram has informed me about what happened last night. It was the next morning after his heart-to-heart -heart with Rem. Aaron found himself sitting with the lord of the manor. Clad in his casual black and red outfit, he was having tea with the clown-like magician. The man surprised him when he went for his morning training, already waiting for him in the garden. He did not expect him back that quickly. In canon, Roswell returned the following night, not in the early morning. Maybe he was already there the whole time, staying hidden to observe Rem bonding with Subaru? The man wished to speak with him privately, so here they are. The pseudo-saber was sitting in Roswell's office, staring at the face of the smiling clown. And once again I find myself indebted to you, Aaron San. Roswell spoke in his usual sing-song voice. You did not just save my employee, but you also helped me by preventing harm to come to those who live on my land. His smile looked so sincere and genuine. And you also prevent the political backlash waiting if one of those things happened. Truly, you have done a very wonderful deed for me. You really are being irresponsible. Aaron replied, seemingly not bothered by the praise. It's his one thing to lose track of Emmy in town, leading to her getting her insignia stolen. I can even overlook her encountering someone dangerous like the bowel hinter in a huge city like that. But this? He shook his head, face stoic and eyes full of disapproval. A magician at your caliber surely should not have any problems creating a barrier powerful enough to keep such filth of his domain. Or at least create something that can act as a defender in case it falls. Hearing the brutal words Roswell's smile dimmed, a small amount of anger in his eyes. I admit what happened was not my brightest moment. He confessed. The barrier I erected is not of a low level. It does not just to guard the village from demon beasts, but of anyone bearing ill will. Aaron found himself blinking at that. What? That was not like the one he saw in canon. If the barrier really can do such things then how did the witch cult still manage to get in? Could Petalgeus have crushed it using his authority? But if he did that it should have caught Roswell's attention and... If I recall he purposely wasn't there and let the village get ravaged in first place, this man. Aaron grit his teeth in his mouth. He may not consider himself a good guy but to just sacrifice a whole village like that. He forced himself to calm, anger would not help anyone right now. I don't want to hear your excuses, I want proof. Act, Rose. Ram claims you as the greatest magician in Lugnica and I want to see it, not hear of it. I assure you I will. Roswell seems taking the words seriously. If it was a mask or genuine, Aaron could not decide. Then shall we move on to the next part Aaron-san? Next part. Aya, don't pretend to be ignorant Aaron-san. Roswell's laid-back demeanor returned as he gave small smirk to the blonde. Tell me, Aaron San. You know what I am going to say, right? He spread his arms wide reminding Aaron of the first time they met. What do you want from this? He asked. I know you're not kind of person who does things without a pre-eas in mind. Aaron's eyes narrowed, of course the man would know that. He was sure the clown-like magician was perfectly aware what kind of man he is. Aaron is no saint. While he is willing to be helpful he will not put his neck on the line if he does not get benefit from it somehow. So what do you want from me this time Aronson? Roswell asked, his eyes twinkling in amusement as his smile curled to a grin. Is it Ram you desire? Aaron blinked, once then twice. Huh. I've heard from Amelia Sama and Rem that you are quite close to Ram. Roswell said with annoying voice, waving his finger in a knowing manner. If you want to have Ram AAAS your personal maid then I will gladly to offer you here contract. The grin on his face widened. 
After all, you seem to enjoy overloading her last night. Despite the teasing tone Aaron could not help the heat creeping onto his cheeks. He remembered his moment with Ram last night, and the way Roswell phrased it made it sound so very, direct. Oh 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 or is it Rem? You like Bluey right? I'm so your Rem is Bluey enough to meet your satisfaction. No. Aaron deadpanned at him, eyebrow twitching in irritation, just no. Stop using those kind of words, it sounds dirty and the way you speak grates on my nerves. Instead of being offended the archmage let out laugh, ah, no hesitation at ale. He shook his head, grin still in his face. You really have sharp tonguey. Aaron's gaze held no trace of amusement. Foo foo foo. Roswell chuckled again. All right, if you did not appreciate I it, the please tell me so. What is you want from me as payment? He asked. This is it, the offer he had been expecting. He mulled over it the whole night, trying to find what he could use to help him, what Roswell could give to assist him in the future. I want two things. Aaron said after moment of silence. Roswell eyebrow narrowed, his heterochromatic eyes peering at the blonde with interest, oh, very greedy. He commented. But since what you did was not a small feat, I guess that was to be expected. He said with grin. Fian, what do you want then? First, I want to have full access to your forbidden library. Ooh. Roswell leaned back in his seat, his face scrunched up in a thoughtful expression, that is certainly a Bayig request, that place is called, forbidden, for reason you know? Not to mention it also holds some of my personal research. And yet you were fine when that library burned down. Aaron thought as he recalled Elsa's assault in Arc 4. The library was turned into a mess, Beatrice to strike a pact with Subaru. You know I can't use a magic, I don't have interest in it. What I want is knowledge and information. That was true, while he did have loads of mana Aaron doesn't have interest in learning magic. While it would be cool to be able summon blizzards and meteors, he found the prospect to be lacking. He already had Excalibur. The Sword of Promised Victory was capable of eradicating armies and blasting apart mountains. He was satisfied with his combat potential, not to mention mastering it will take a long time still. Knowledge however, was power. And it tended to be hidden well. Through that library perhaps he could find a way to go home without needing help from Amelia. He did not want to stay in this world for more than a year at the most. Will. Roswell smiled and for a moment there was a strange glint in his eyes. Knowledge and information, the why you say it it sound very, ambitious. He chuckled while rolling the words on his tongue. While I will gladly allow you access to my library, sadly you need another person's approval to get full access. Beatrice San. Aaron spoke after moment of silence. At the man's nod he let out a sigh, of course. As far he recalled that library existed since Echidna's era, which was 400 years ago, and Beatrice is a spirit taking care of it under her order. Roswell may have access but it is clearly through inheritance, not because he was allowed to in first place. Yet another problem to deal with, do I need to trigger some of her flags next? He thought sarcastically and sourly. You can re-add the books in fear if you want. Roswell spoke in cheerful voice, however, please remember that place is controlled by here. She can kick you at any time if she wish so. I know. Aaron replied while pinching the bridge of his nose. The second thing I want. He pursed his lips. Well, it's more like an offer of partnership rather than a request. Oh. Roswell rose forward from his seat, face showing his interest, a partnership. I have some Matia from my homeland. Aaron explained. I have not seen anything like them since arriving here. Perhaps you will be able to recreate them. You could publicly share them in Amelia's name, increasing her popularity. He offered. Roswell seemed very intrigued at the idea, his fingers tapping his chin, he let out a hum. Very interesting. He spoke slowly drawing out each syllable. So you do support Amelia-sama to become king? It was more like statement than a question. Truthfully. I'm not sure. Aaron answered the lord of the manor, I have yet to meet any other royal candidates. While I do approve of Emmy becoming king, my opinion can still change. Amelia would make a just king, her heart was in the right place and she strived for equality over all things. The current economic crisis would need to be solved first before that can be achieved though. But for now, I will support Emmy because she is my friend. Spreading my Mattia will also give her some standing concerning the other candidates. Even if I would choose to not directly support her, she would still be able to put up more of a fight. 
Truth to be told, Aaron was sure he was going to support Amelia, he did not have much of a choice. He needed her to get back home, things would just be awkward if he abandoned her for another candidate. Not that he would admit as much in front of Roswell. Hmm, is that so? Roswell seems very pleased by the answer judging by his smile, very weal, I can see your point. He stated, no. He leaned closer to Aaron, his face showing an eager expression. Tell me about this Mattia. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.